You hear on the radio, news, or through a co-worker, a madman at your daughter or son's college or school has gone on a killing spree, and 33 students are believed to be dead. Of course, you grab your cell phone, dial your child's number, and instead of them picking up, it goes to voicemail. You feel nauseated like you're going to throw up and you can't think straight. You can't leave work and drive to the school because it is 800 miles from home. You do the only thing you can do. You pray. You hate to see anyone's child get hurt, but you pray it was someone else's, not yours. Parents all over the country are praying it is not their child as well, but 33 of them will have their hearts broken before the day is over. You've always thought it would be a good idea in today's world to get your child educated in firearm safety, as well as a certification to conceal and carry so you could purchase them a small caliber handgun for protection when you could not be there to protect them, or you have always just been afraid of guns. It is obvious to most wise Americans, guns will not just disappear from the face of the earth, and gun laws make sure that only criminals are armed and may maim or kill you at will. A room full of unarmed college kids is easier than clubbing baby seals. Last week my daughter was at her evening chemistry class when the loudspeaker crackled on to announce there was an armed intruder in the building. They all panicked, of course, and followed the teacher's instructions to get behind their chairs while he locked the classroom doors and put some video equipment on metal carts in front of them as well. Then they waited to die and listened for gunshots. They turned the lights off and tried to be quiet like the classroom was empty. They heard footsteps outside several times and were thankful when they passed by the dark classroom. It felt like the entire incident was taking all night when the loudspeaker crackled back on to tell the students and teachers this had been a drill. Nobody was warned there was going to be a drill and nobody was ever taught what to do in case of an armed intruder. They were operating on instinct, making the best decisions they could under the circumstances with no training or tools. My daughter was texting her mother, telling her she loved her and to take care of her son Gage. She believed she was going to be shot and killed that night and almost threw up she was so sick. She had to leave school after the drill as did many children and they were very, very lucky they were able to. Forget the fact that the school should be sued for not training anyone for such a situation or warning them of the drill. How would you like to be sitting in that classroom with nothing but a pencil and a cell phone waiting to be murdered, gunned down in the middle of your lecture? I would have been sitting there with my 38, with my crimson laser, pointed for the doors, and the teacher should have been as well. If an armed gunman would have walked through and began to shoot, I guarantee you, I would have left a very nasty exit wound in the perpetrator in order to save my life and your children's because I don't leave home without it. How many children would I have saved? Maybe yours. How many at Virginia Tech? How many at Columbine? Omaha Mall? And the list goes on. What's next?